You guys want to see something cool? Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome back to Lafayette Systems. I mostly build rockets on this channel, but I wanted to design and build my very first 3D printed RC plane. Because this is my very first custom RC plane, I did the sensible thing and made it extremely complicated. This is Hatchet. It is 76 millimeters in diameter, it has deployable wings, a ducted fan engine, and is controlled by these four control surfaces at the back, which also provide thrust vector control. Its payload is a custom designed camera turret with both visible light and infrared cameras that will autonomously find and track video targets. Let's go from nose to tail and talk about what's inside this vehicle, why I put it there, and what this whole thing is going to be used for. Hatchet was designed to fit in a 3 inch diameter cardboard airframe. These are super common in amateur rocketry but aren't seen very much in the RC plane community. As you guys will see, I used a lot of the construction techniques from my rockets in this project. These probably aren't optimal for RC planes, but I'm using what I know. At Hatchet's nose is its nose camera. This is a run cam split 4K and just stores footage on the onboard micro SD card, but this could also be linked to an FPV transmitter for video during flight. Its nose cone is 3D printed in PETG and has an acrylic window so that the nose camera can see out. Above the camera is the payload battery compartment. Hatchet has two batteries, and its payload is electrically separate from the propulsion and control system. This will let me put the payload on another RC aircraft, a drone, or maybe even a ground station. The payload battery powers Hatchet's three cameras, the camera turret control board, and the payload data link radio. Hatchet's payload is a remote, autonomous, dual-color camera turret. This was 3D printed, and it's a custom design that I made myself. It uses an electro-optical camera, so visible light camera, and a long-wave infrared camera to watch things from the air. The onboard electronics process the infrared camera image and will autonomously track heat plumes. The visible light camera stores its footage on an onboard micro SD card and may also eventually send its video over an FPV camera transmitter. This system is designed to track and film rocket launches from the air. The infrared camera is really useful in identifying these rocket launches. When rockets are ignited, their hot exhaust emits a ton of infrared light. This camera will identify and slew to track that heat plume as the rocket ascends. That helps solve the problem of identifying the rocket against ground clutter in the visible light bands. This is also how military satellites detect and track rocket launches from space, but uh, their cameras are a lot nicer than mine. DC motors and a custom motor control board will pan and tilt the camera ball which is driven by these O-rings and a series of wheels and tensioners. The camera control board has an onboard IMU, which can help stabilize the camera view as the aircraft pitches and rolls around during flight. This camera tracking project is still being worked on, and it needs to be ground tested before it flies, so for today, we're just going to have our two visible light cameras recording in fixed positions. Aft of the cameras is a LiDAR module. LiDAR, or light detection and ranging, tells you the distance to an object by firing a short pulse of light. It then times how long it takes for that light pulse to bounce off an object and come back telling you the distance. This LiDAR module will be used in the drone's eventual autonomous mode to hold a constant altitude while it's observing rocket launches and also maybe land by itself, but this isn't hooked up yet. Eventually I want to add some autonomous capability to Hatchet, but that's definitely a project for a later date. We do need to include all of our mass components, whether they're plugged in or not, to keep our center of gravity in the right place though. So for now, Hatchet's flown manually from the RC receiver here on top of the LiDAR mount. This receives the signal from our RC controller and it drives the servos and the ducted fan. Aft of the LiDAR is the wing and battery assembly. Hatchet was designed with deployable wings to be fired from my rocket hot launch silo with a rocket booster. This wing has gone through a couple of revisions. First I played around with this type of deployable delta design, but this is a very small wing area and would give us a really high cruise and stall speed. It's not very good for hand launches. I then looked at this design with two large folding wings. While I do eventually want to fly this design, it is uh, ambitious and still gives us a pretty high stall speed. So for these early flights, we're going to use even larger fixed wings to decrease our stall speed and increase our flight time. The wing mount includes a rotation mechanism for the wings, a servo to deploy them, and the primary flight battery. This battery is relatively small, so we won't get a ton of endurance. 
At the end of the day, this aircraft wasn't designed to be optimal or frankly even very useful. I mostly built it because it was cool and I had never done something like this before. At the bottom is the mount for the camera telemetry radio. It is right at the center of mass, so it's going to be unpopulated today. On the side here is a slot for the ESC or electronic speed controller. This powers the ducted fan via the battery and has a flush NACA air inlet for cooling. One of the things we're testing today is seeing how well this small duct cools the ESC. If the ESC gets too hot, the aircraft will turn off and the whole thing crashes, which is a suboptimal outcome for a first flight test. Aft of the wings is a large space for those deployable wings to fold back into. This is empty volume that we can't really fill with anything else, even when we're using those fixed wings for this first few flights. At the very back of the vehicle is the propulsion and control assembly. This is a single large 3D print that holds the ducted fan engine and fin servos. Hatchet uses four X-form control surfaces to steer a lot like my rockets. My experience designing and building rocket active control systems was super useful here. You can see a lot of the design similarities between Hatchet on the left and Diamond Nexus control and propulsion assembly on the right. An air scoop at the bottom of the vehicle feeds the ducted fan, which exhausts out the rear between the servos. These control surfaces are super cool. Their rear sticks through the wall of the fan exhaust duct, and they have this tiny little notch. In that notch, we can attach these thin blades. These blades, or jet vanes, will rotate with the control surfaces and will vector the fan thrust around as the control surfaces move. This will provide increased control authority at low speeds and high EDF thrust. We're going to be hand launching this vehicle, which, you guessed it, is going to be a low speed high thrust condition. The whole vehicle is based around an endoskeleton design, with these really long carbon fiber rods providing structural stability and the cardboard airframe basically serving as an aero cover for everything. This is my first time really doing an endoskeleton design, and it's been an interesting journey. It has been nice because I can remove the main tube and kind of build slash troubleshoot the drone basically fully assembled. If I were to do this again though, I would have cut this tube into a couple different sections sliced horizontally. That would have let me attach them one at a time and would make disassembly and assembly easier. I could also remove one of them and troubleshoot versus having to remove the entire airframe assembly. Designing and building Hatchet has involved learning a lot of new things for me. I've never really worked with RC receivers or controllers that much, and it reminded me when I first started to learn about electronics or coding. There are a ton of good resources out there, but very few of them take a step-by-step -step approach or they assume that you have some kind of deep background knowledge in the field. If you want to get into coding, math, or AI, or just brush up on your skills, today's sponsor Brilliant really is a brilliant place to start. Brilliant's courses focus on hands-on problem solving and start right from the beginning for each subject. Their programming courses are great if you want to get your coding journey started, and they're available both on mobile and desktop so you can learn no matter where you are. Most of the code you'll ever write is based on a pretty small set of logical operations, like for loops and if statements. Brilliance courses will get you working with these concepts quickly, so you can get whatever project you're building off the ground fast. Brilliance courses in AI are also super useful if you want to get into things like machine vision or autonomous camera tracking. Hey, that sounds familiar. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for 30 days completely free and get 20% off an annual subscription, visit brilliant.org slash Lafayette or click the link in the video description. Most of Hatchet's 3D printed parts are made out of PETG, with some of the camera parts made from CFPC or carbon fiber polycarbonate. The cameras are easily the most expensive part here, so I figured encasing them in the nice filament would kind of put them inside of a black box if this thing crashes. Hopefully it keeps them safe. So once we got all the stuff printed, it's time for testing. I programmed my transmitter for proper mixing of the control surfaces, and I tested the wing release servo. I also ran the plan form, or the general arrow layout, by some folks with a lot more experience than me, and they gave me some really good suggestions. I'm especially grateful for the folks over at the RC Test Flight Discord. They pointed me to some great tools for arrow analysis, and they suggested some good changes. These involved making the larger wings and increasing the control surface area. I do fully expect these lower control surfaces to break on landing, so I intentionally printed them weak, and I'll bring lots of extras out to the field. Alright, so this thing is built and tested, let's get it flying. No, the fan made a noise, I don't know, what it's like a crunching? Did it eat something? I don't know. Well that is what the noise was. In terms of fan blades, we have no fan blades. 
So it looks like something got sucked into the fan inlet duct here and it hit the fan and then the whole thing exploded because we also have holes in the inlet duct here and here. Uh, FOD strikes again. So I need to print another one of these and get a new fan. Let's do that. So just to be clear here, we ran fan tests on these little stands with the vehicle on the ground inlet duct down, which was not a very smart idea. It probably ingested a rock or something and it chewed up all the fan blades. If you have a side mounted duct like hatchet, make sure it's always pointed away from any sources of debris during these ground tests. Like a glove, look at that. After fixing the propulsion and control assembly, my friend San and I went back out to the field to try again. He drew the short straw and had to try to launch the aircraft by hand, and I would try to fly it. All right, are we ready to go? I'm gonna go full throttle here. Three, two, one, go. doesn't fly. We ding the wing a little bit, and I think the nose cone's good, right? Yeah, nose cone is good. Yeah, there's a little hole. The hole is... That's fine. All right, let's, I'm gonna replace this back fin that broke, and then we'll try it again. All right, here we go. Full throttle. All right, watch your head. Three, two, one. <laughs> I threw it good. <laughs> I think that's actually good. Yeah, the fins are not fins are fine. All right, let's see the nose. Ooh, the wings good. Wings come out. Yeah. Maybe that's a good thing. They kind of absorb damage, you know. You could do it like this, and I could turn the fan on after you throw it. Then it would be kind of sketchy. Though. Yeah, but at least you could hold it from here then. I don't know. I don't know if that would help. But ready when you are. Three, two, one. I think I don't I don't think I have yaw stability enough. Yeah, uh, fins broke again, but it landed pretty flat. Yeah. Did it go sideways back? That was you definitely. It was like this. Maybe just I need more fin area in the rear. You know. That's all right. These broke, which is what they were supposed to do. You can see the fin broke, but the TVC veins are still good, and the wings are still good. We did. Snap the nose cone. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. I'll make a new nose cone. You can hear it rattling around in there. So these first flight attempts did not go great. We had three unsuccessful launches, and here's where I would love your help. I know there are a lot of you watching that have lots of RC plane and drone experience. I have three ideas I'd like to try, and I'd like your opinions on whether you think they'll work or if you have any additional ideas. First, I think a problem is certainly takeoff weight. Hatchet stall speed is still really high, even with these big wings, and I'm not sure any of my friends or I can throw it hard enough to get the vehicle up to the speed, at least reliably. I think I should reduce takeoff weight as much as possible for the second round of tests. I can remove the entire payload section and move the flight battery, which is right here, up to the front to keep the center of gravity in the right spot. 
I can then remove this heavy wing assembly right here with all of the bearings and the servo and replace it with a much more lightweight one that just attaches to these carbon fiber rods on the wings. I think doing those two things should reduce takeoff weight by like 30-40% and should reduce that stall speed even further. The second thing that I want to try is an even larger control surface. Now, I would love to just make these control surfaces as big as I can, but as you can see, we're already breaking them every time we land. So what I'm thinking of is a kind of Y tail shape. So I'm thinking of making these ones on the top relatively large, and then really small ones on the bottom. I would leave the thrust vectoring system in place, and so we could still get all that thrust vectoring, but with really little short control surfaces on the bottom. Our stability margin is positive for both pitch and yaw, but uh, it's not super positive. And that's also based on kind of a mushy model. And I don't think we have enough stability margin for reliable hand launching. So increasing that control surface area should give us a little bit more of a margin, regardless of what type of launching technique we use. The last thing I want to try is a rail launcher. There are a couple good designs I've found online, and it sounds like a really cool side project. I would use probably a bungee cord system and basically put this whole thing on a rail and fire it off to get it up to speed, point it in the right direction quickly. So those are my three ideas on how to make Hatchet at least launchable. Uh, I think the design is very cool. I've had an absolute blast designing this thing. I think the payload's really neat and I'm still working on that, but I would love to get uh, it in the air reliably. And right now, that's our sticking point. But don't worry, Hatchet's definitely not going away. We're gonna have some more flights, we're going to make some of the changes, and I'm going to see what you guys say in the comments. And we're also going to do some more with this payload. I think this is going to be a really neat payload, both on a flight vehicle and also on a ground station for tracking things in the air. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break going into next year, but we'll definitely be back. And my next video is going to be something a little different, so I hope you guys enjoy that one. Make sure you're subscribed to see all the stuff coming up. Thanks for watching.